Hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Sorry, guys. Okay, only seven of you decided to attend my seven o'clock morning class. Doesn't matter, guys. Take off those books and let's draw our seven different drainage patterns. All right, what is a drainage pattern? In a simple definition, we will say there are different arrangement of streams in a drainage basin. All right, let's write it down. What did I say? Different arrangement of streams. In a drainage basin. Okay, and what actually makes the different arrangement of streams to be possible? It is called the underlying rocks. For you to better understand the underlying rocks, we have to draw a structure of our different patterns. And our first pattern is called the dendritic pattern. Yes, and the dendritic pattern obviously consists of what we call the main river like most of the patterns you will find. So our river or our mainstream will be joined by its tributaries at an acute angle. Yes, an acute angle. What does an acute angle mean? Pure mass learners will tell you that this, it is called our right angle, right? This is our right angle. Angle that is smaller than our right angle, which is obviously going to be like this. This is called our acute angle. This is obviously our acute angle. So it will be joining at our acute angle. Even the streams will be joining each other at an acute angle. All right. And after we have obviously joined the tributaries at an acute angle, what do you see when you are looking at the structure? You just obviously see the branches of a tree. You see a structure that looks like the branches of the tree. That is also your mark. All right. So the main reason or the main answer you need to have is that what actually causes this pattern to be possible? It is what we call the underlying rocks that are found in this pattern. This is a dendritic pattern. And what underlying rocks do you find here? You find uniform rocks that are equally resistant to erosion. What do I mean by that? I mean the rocks that are found on the dendritic patterns are the same. Whether you are standing on the source or you are standing on the mouth of the dendritic pattern, it doesn't matter. The rocks that you will find here are all the same. They are all uniform. And what do I mean when I say resistance to erosion? It simply means that they erode the same way the uniform rocks erode the same way whether you are at the top the high lying area or the low lying area the erosion will still be the same the streams will be joining the main river at an acute angle it doesn't matter where it, the erosion will be the same the rocks will be eroded the same okay remember this is what we call our 90 degrees angle this one is our 90 degrees angle okay let's move to our second drainage pattern which is called the trellis pattern yes it is also associated with the main river or the mainstream but then its difference it is that oh my brother it's mainstream it is not curvy as the dendritic pattern it is just straight yes it is just straight and our second mark is that its tributaries join that mainstream at the right angle the 90 degree angle yes the tributaries join at the 90 degree angle yes guys this is our 90 degree angle right we must obviously remember that why does it join at the right angle or why does it look like this mainly because of the underlying rocks which underlying rocks do we find on a trellis pattern we find the soft and hard rocks yes meaning where there is the mainstream why is it moving straight because of it is located where there are soft rocks there is less disturbance there's less obstruction so it is flowing straight on the soft rocks while on the sides meaning if it's flowing straight it can't turn and take a quick right or a quick left or a quick right or a quick left mainly because of the sides have hard rocks it means here they are what we call hard rocks but then here in the middle we have what we call soft rocks so that's why it is associated with soft and hard rocks 
All right, and it also associated with folded sentimentary rocks. What are sentimentary rocks? Guys, sentimentary rocks you've learned on day 10, but then I can try to remind you. They are rocks that have layers. The fossils is there, the, the soil is there, and there's the bricks, the stones, the rocks are there. It is just compressed together. So a sentimentary rocks obviously look like this. The layers. I've said, I spoke about the layers. This is how it looks. But then when they say a folded sentimentary rock, it simply means that it's like this, right? It has obviously bent or it has obviously folded. How do I draw it nicely? Like this, right? So this is our folded sentimentary rock. It explains what I was saying. In the middle of the sentimentary rock, this is means it is soft. This is where this river it is flowing. This mainstream, it is flowing. But then on the sides, on the sides, it is very hard. Yes. This is how it explains the very same thing I was explaining here. These are the underlying rocks, the sentimentary rocks, and you could also find the ignoseous rocks on the sides. The hard ignoseous rocks you may find on the sides, while in the middle you may find the soft uh, sentimentary rocks which have already folded. Okay, let's move to our third drainage pattern. It might actually confuse you when you know the trail is pattern already but then you can't be confused by geography make sure that you pay attention what do i say let me wipe here right okay so our rectangular pattern obviously has the mainstream or the main river but then it's mainstream and main river this is where it gets interesting it turns or it bends on a 90 degree right so it's main river or stream it bends on a 90 degree right this is our nicest 90 degrees right nicest 90 degrees we can see them right and what also is happening there the tributaries are joining the mainstream also on a 90 degree right the tributaries are also joining the mainstream on our nicest 90 degrees right guys this is where you find your marks the two characteristics between the regular shape and the trellis shape it is obviously different the only thing that is the same here it is that the tributaries join the mainstream at a 90 degree angle but then when you look at the trellis pattern and the rectangular pattern you can just simply see that this one is very much different than the trellis pattern okay and why is it so much different than the trellis pattern because of its underlying rocks what are its underlying rocks you find igneous cracked rocks so let's say this is our nicest surface right and this is surface is obviously the igneous rock here there's an igneous rock but then it is cracked like this our rocks have cracked and when there's precipitation on that drainage basin it will obviously be forced to do what to extend and join, forced to extend and join the cracked areas of the ignoseous rock. And it will look like this. And obviously the small cracks on the ignoseous rock will obviously look like the right angle streams that are joining the main river. So it is associated with massive ignoseous rocks that are cracked, right? Cracked ignoseous rocks are the underlying rocks in the in the rectangular while here soft and hard rocks okay let's move to our nicest fourth nicest fourth drainage pattern all right should i wipe no let me just move here our fourth drainage pattern simply says the mainstream or the main river they are doing what they are flowing away from the high altitude they are flowing away from the high altitude towards the low altitude how does it look like this is obviously our rivers that are trying to flow away from the central high lying area they are flowing away from the central high altitude these are obviously also its tributaries that are joining the main whatever and it's nice right you can see they are flowing away from the central point why does that usually happen you usually find this pattern 
on the mountains or where there has been a volcano so it's like a dome shaped structure the underlying rock you may say it's a dome shaped structure usually associated with igneous rocks because of igneous rocks you usually find them on the volcanic areas and this is where you find the dendritic pattern usually so it's like a dome shape this is what it means the water flows like this the river flows like that right this is what our high lying altitude our high lying area and this is our low lying area it flows from a high lying area towards a low lying area mainly because of it usually occurs on a dome like structure all right so now let's move to something that almost looks similar like the radial pattern did i say it this is the radial pattern okay you should know them by heart i'm so proud to be a geography teacher i know the world by heart you should be one of that okay and now let's move to our fifth drainage pattern i can't wipe this because of it almost looked like this but then it's very much total different all right and our fifth one is called the centripetal pattern yes the centripetal pattern simply means the streams are moving towards the central point the central low lying altitude while here the streams or the river was flowing away from the central high altitude here the streams they are flowing towards the low altitude right so this is what i mean by that the streams are flowing to the central low the streams are flowing to the central low if you see a pattern like this you must just know that this is the central portal pete right why do they move like this why are they moving to our central because of the underlying rocks which underlying rocks you usually find igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks you can find either one of them how do they look like they look like a basin like shape so they look like a basin like shape so when the water moves from a high lying area it will obviously move toward the central low this is the central low the river flows towards the central low towards the central low while here it flows away the central high here towards the central low here away the central low because of the dome like shape because of the basin like shape very much simple and we obviously have to move to our sixth one which is the deranged the deranged doesn't make sense i don't even have space to draw it but then even though if i have one it looks like that yes this is the one i says deranged pattern deranged pattern it is crazy crazy pattern no one understands where is the source where is the mouth where is the streams there are no streams that are joining the main river we do not understand what's happening in the deranged pattern and lastly the parallel pattern I'm not going to be doing it. You are used to teachers giving you everything. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel and make sure that you draw the parallel pattern as your homework. Okay. Okay guys, let's move to our obviously usually asked questions, the drainage density, which simply means the number of streams found per drainage basin or you could research your own definition guys so we obviously have a low drainage density and a high drainage density meaning there are low number of streams and there are high number of streams here right so this is obviously what i just said right there are less numbers of streams here while on the high density oh my brother you find those things there you find those nice things there and there are a lot of them you find a lot of these streams here right you find a lot of these streams here joining each other joining each other right so now we have a high density and a low density the real question has to be what causes low density and a high density the low density simply means there's less precipitation therefore there will be less streams and there is a high vegetation therefore a lot of water if there is precipitation will be absorbed and there is high infiltration meaning the area it is dry there is high infiltration and the area we could say it is gentle right the area it is gentle so the water obviously can be able to 
infiltrate the crowd very much simple here has to be definitely on the opposite you definitely know one characteristics you'll know the other here simply means high precipitation a uh, hard rocks there are hard rocks meaning there is less of infiltration the water can infiltrate or we could say this area it is deep this area it is steep that's why there are a lot of streams or we could just simply say there is less vegetation to obviously absorb and deflect and do a lot of things with the water coming from precipitation so this is how you differentiate your high density and your low density all right and let's come to the most important one the stream order okay using the very same streams we'll now try to calculate the stream order right so the stream order simply means you have to start with the top you have to start with the top and give them one 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 and one one right and you add one plus one what do we find we find two one plus two this stream obviously mixed with the stream what do we find we find two so if one and two are mixing each other, we are not finding three, but then the bigger number wins. So this one is one, meaning here it obviously flows one with two, obviously two wins. One with two, obviously two wins. One with two, obviously two wins. This means this is our second stream, right? This is our second stream. Okay, guys. So here, what about this one? This one has to be the different. Obvious, we start with the outsider. One, 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 one. Was this a stream? Yeah. One, one, one. What's happening here? Okay. One, 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 one. Right? So now we have all of them with ones. We start here. One plus one, what do we find? We find our nicest two. 1 plus 2, what do we find? We find our nicest 2, obviously. 1 plus 1, what do we find? We find our nicest... What's happening here? Where is this joining? Okay, this one obviously has to join here. So this means our 1 and 1, what do we find? We find 2. Our 2 and 1, we find our 2. Our 2 and 1, we find our 2 again, right? So our 1 and 2, we find our 2 again. Meaning our 2 and 2, now this is where it starts to get interesting. Our 2 and 2, we find our nicest 3, right? So our 1 and 1, we find our 2. Our 2 and... Yes, this 2, this 2 is obviously here. Our... Yes, our 2 and 3, right? Our 2 and 3, what has to win? The 3 has to win, Okay. One and one, what do we have here? We have our two. And our two and our one, it is our obvious two, right? And then what will happen here? Our one and one, this is our two. Yes, then we have our one and our two, and this is obviously our two. Our two and our three, our three has to win. This means it's our third. Third stream, right? Okay, guys. So let's move to our last subtopic. Finally, we have reached the end of a drainage system. What is our last subtopic? We are now speaking about the river discharge. The river discharge simply means the flow of the river according to the gradient of the slope. Yes, the flow of the river, there are two types of the river flow. There's a turbulent flow and the lamina flow. Obviously, love the lamina flow. The lamina flow simply means the river bed, it is flat, gentle. The water, it is not moving at a high speed. There are less rock obstacles and there's less of all of that. While on the turbulent, oh my brother, the slope, it is very steep, meaning the water, it is on its highest pace. There are rocks. There is, it is just not in a gentle manner. All right, guys. So now we have to understand a lot of our drainage system via the internet. Make sure you do a lot of research because of drainage system needs a lot of research and make sure you've already liked my video, subscribe this video because of it's part of that research and we're moving to the fluvial processes. I've had a lot of comments and I'm now moving there. We are moving to a lot of river rejuvenation, a lot of everything. Okay, stay tuned because of Semnumzani will always be here for you. Okay.